What's going on, you all? My name is Darren Rowan, and I'm a storytelling coach. But more importantly, I was also a king in chapter two of the King series. Now we're in the chapter three, and I am blessed to be your ambassador. Listen, you do not want to miss one episode of chapter three, because we know how Cal is. He's going to bring the fire, the passion, and the energy to each and every episode. Chapter three, King series. Let's go. Or night, whenever you watch these videos, I know we all got to do in our life. So hope you've really been enjoying this King series, man. This King series, we started in June. And now we have one more day until the video, which is tomorrow. So yes, we have another video dropping tomorrow. It's going to complete the King series, chapter three. This Kings, man, y'all been doing a really great job. I just want to say the King series, chapter three, y'all just been, every video has been amazing. It truly has been amazing. And shout out to King Series Chapter 1 that started off the King Series. And then we had the King Series Chapter 2. Now we're in the King Series Chapter 3. And just want to say, man, thanks for all y'all support. Thanks for all y'all been doing. Before I just keep on going, going and going, because you know I can. I got somebody that's about to get to hit this stage, man. My first person I met off a of clubhouse. And um, was able to meet him. Very amazing guy. I'm happy to call him my brother in Christ. I'm happy for the stuff he's doing. happy that he deals with Kyle Jacko. Because if y'all don't know, I am a whole person to deal with. I don't know how he deals with me, but he deals with me. He, he deals with everything that comes along with Kyle Jacko, man. So right now, I'm going to do shout out to somebody I probably don't know. I'm going to do to the great, amazing, the GOAT, Jeremy Franklin. Come on to the stage, man. Tell everybody who you is, King. Kyle, brother, what's going on, man? What's the deal, man? Good to see you. Man, I, I appreciate what you're doing with the King series and, and, and how that's transpiring. I, I'm just so amazed at, at what God is doing in your life and how he is just exploding you and preparing you for, for great things. And uh, I, I count this an honor and, a, and, a, and an honor of my life to, to share this stage with you, to share this platform with you. Uh, I'm Jeremy. I'm a husband, a father. I'm a lover of God, lover of people. And I am just in the business of loving people, of, of speaking life. Uh, I, say I, I speak life today as long as it is today, um, because you never know um, what the next step will be. You never know what life is going to is, is ahead, because I always say this, we're living on borrowed breath. Every breath is borrowed. Every breath is a moment for us to uh, reimagine our lives. And what an awesome privilege to speak life into someone and see their life flourish. And so I'm about planting seeds and seeing people's lives flourish. And now y'all understand why I call him Jeremy the Great. Now y'all get it. So King, my next question to you is right here. How do you weigh your crown of society around other kings? Man, that's a great question. Uh, how do I wear my crown? I wear my crown with, with pride because in that crown, there may be some scratches. Uh, you may not see it, but there may be some rust underneath because it's been through some stuff. Uh, there may be some, some dirt on it because it, it's come through a storm, it's come through some fire, it's come through some trials and tribulations. I wear my crown with pride because it's a symbol of my life is a symbol of the sacrifices people have left and made for me to be where I am today. And so I wear it with pride, knowing that if someone can get a glimpse of my shine, then it could empower them. It could hopefully impart some life and impart uh, some energy into who they are and to what they're doing. So I wear my, I wear my crown with pride, man. I love that. I love that. Got another question for you. And this question right here, I'm going to tell you, you can't use Jesus, you can't say Emmanuel, you can't say God, you can't say Yahweh, you can't say none of them. This right here is a question I'm asking you. Who is your king role model? With me, my king role model, my first king role model is Malcolm X. And why is Malcolm X? Because if y'all don't know me, I had to speak like it first before I came to God. So when Malcolm X, at first he was called Detroit Red. He went from Detroit Red, ended up getting in trouble. When he got in trouble, he ended up getting locked up. When he got locked up, he went to jail, and he became a Muslim. Once he became a Muslim, then he went to Mecca. He came back from Mecca with a different mind frame. Think about that. A king changes his mind frame three times in a row. And I really do believe this right here. 
if Malcolm X would have lived to this day, I believe he would have got the Muslims and the Christians together because the mind frame was already changing anyway. And then my second king, y'all should know this by now, is Pastor Dr. Kern B. Lee. And why my pastor is the second king because I see him on the pulpit, but he's the same way when he get off the pulpit. I see the husband is, I see the father is, I see how he, he makes sure he remembers everybody in the name of church. We have a big church. Make sure you remember everybody in name. I love how he gives us the word because what he do is he'll give us the word, but at the same time, too, he will also try to make it easier so everybody can understand. Because a lot of times some pastors, they make it be so difficult, but Pastor Lee makes sure he breaks it down so even a baby can understand exactly what he's talking about. So I love that. And then, you know, me getting ready to go to seminary school, I mean, looking at him, it's a great thing. See what he's doing. Look at a lot of other people. But when I came up with this question, to let y'all know a little bit more, this is why he is not idolizing man. You only idolize God. But God sends us people in our lives that we can actually just vibe with and see who they are. And that's when you see them as something that's great. So I never want nobody to think I'm trying to idolize anybody. It's always idolizing God, but I'm just so happy and proud that God has put Pastor Lee in my life. Let me just envision and see some of the stuff that Malcolm X was doing. And it's just been a great thing for me right now. So I just wanted to let y'all know. So y'all would be like, man, Jack, I idolize. No, you know, I don't idolize nobody but God. But thank God for sending my pastor and let me see the stuff that Malcolm X did. It's just uh, amazing thing. So German. I'm going to get to you, man. Let us know who your king role models is. Give me two king role models. I want you to say their name, and I want you to know, let us know why they had a strong impact on your life. Mm, man, Kyle, man, I love what you said, man, and, and, and how God sends us examples and, and models um, for us to pattern our lives after and to be inspired by. You know, when I think about kings, uh, one of my kings is my, is my grandfather. And um, you, and I, you and I had a conversation about this once before, and uh, my grandfather, who they called Big Jake, uh, Jacob, uh, he got out of, he had to leave school uh, out of seventh grade because he had to attend uh, his family's farm and to work. Um, he and my grandmother had 12 kids, had 11 kids, and they were able to send all through college, uh, except for one, and that was because he didn't want to. What was interesting for me and why I love this man so much is because when I was a young kid, he would take me to the nursing home and we would pray for everyone in the facility. He did this every Sunday and he would take me there and we would just, oh man, have a great time. And we would, and he would show me what it was like to care for other individuals who could not care for themselves. He would show me what it was like to, uh, to serve people, even when people would spit in your face and people would turn their backs on you. He was just relentless about his love pursuit of people. Not to mention, he would let me sit in his lap and because he couldn't read that well, he would have me read the scripture to him as early as, as, as I was maybe seven or eight years old. I'm sitting in his lap and reading the scripture and I got tired of reading the scripture, right? And I missed, maybe I'm like, I'm gonna skip maybe two verses and I skipped two verses. He said, ah, ah, ah. wait a minute. I, I, I love him for, for his example or for him instilling those, those values in me. That, I got so many kings, man. There's another king, uh, his, I, I can't really think of his name at the moment and his name isn't really that important most important is about the legacy that he left in me and about the encouragement that he gave me. When I, every Sunday, every time I saw him, he would always say, Jeremy, I'm dependent on you. And he would do that thing just like that, Jeremy, I'm dependent on you. And I, I got so annoyed every time I would hear him speak. I got so annoyed every time. I'm like, why is this man saying this all the time? To the point when I was in college, there were some times I wanted to quit. Right, there were some times I wanted to, to throw in the towel. There were some times I wanted to forget my upbringing. And I remember in the quietness and the stillness of the night, his whisper echoed in my ear because it got down inside of me. And I heard him say, although he was not present, I heard his voice, Jeremy, I'm dependent on you. 
And anytime a king can have influence and change your life and not be present, that's a king right there. I love that because I, I'm not lying to you, man. Everything that I do in my life, I really feel like Pastor Lee is just really right there. Like, I see what you're doing. I, I see it. So that's why when you hear me on Clubhouse, it's always so vibrant and so strong because I really believe like Pastor Lee, is, even though he's not on Clubhouse, but I feel like Pastor Lee is really right there listening to me on Clubhouse. So I make sure that I'm accountable for everything I say. I make sure everything I do is always a great thing. And shout out, man, to both the two kings, man, because they instill some great, amazing knowledge in you, man. Like, for real, for real. And I see it every single day when it comes to you. So I'm very, very proud of you to share that with us. So, Jeremy Franklin, you know I love to play games. I got a game called the Wordplay. So, man, unmute your microphone. And, King, I got something special for you. See, you since you're my spiritual brother, you're not going to have three questions. You're going to, you're not going to have three. You're going to have five. Give what? You five of them. Yes, I'm gonna give you five because I know right now people people see you on club. I hear you on Instagram. They want to hear more stuff about you. So what the word play works is I can say a person, place, or thing, and then when I say it, I want you to go in detail and answer each one of them. I got you. I got you. And and at the end of it, you are gonna get a gift. I like it. I like it. Okay. Cool. He says that now, everybody. He says that now. <laughs> okay. Your first one, I would love for you to paint a picture of what God looks like in your mind. Ooh, God. No one has ever asked me that question. Oh, man. That's, oh, that's good. That's good. God, for me, is an endless sea of possibility a glass picture where I see myself in him. Reflecting from the sky, I see the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. The, the colors fascinate me. And it reminds me that he is multicolored, that he is multidimensional, that he has a way of speaking like no other person can. God to me, voices like thunder. It is like butter oozing off of, 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 of corn on a cob, of a hot butter biscuit. God's voice to me radiates like the sun. God's voice to me breaks the bars in which I feel trapped. God for me is an endless sea of possibility. That's what I think about when I see God. The depth of the ocean, you can never find yourself, but you can desire always to be in its depths, to be rocked in the sea, in the chaos of the day, the waves whisper and the waves rock like I just rocked my little son to sleep. God is more and God is that. Okay, love that, love that. Your next one is gonna be marriage. Paint a picture for all of us that ain't never been married before. Cause you know, you. <laughs> You, you got your queen, so paint that picture for us, marriage. When I say that, what comes to your mind? Man, when I think about marriage, I think about my one and only, my, my, my cutie, my, my Holy Ghost cutie. <laughs> I think about the lady I fell in love with in college um, because of what she wrote in a newsletter that I fell in love with her before I ever saw her face. I think about the time where I said I do and was nervous because I didn't think that I was worthy to have someone so pure, to have someone so righteous, to have someone so in love with me. Who am I to receive God's gift, God's favor? And I thought I was blessed before. I thought that I was, I, I, I had it all. But, but scripture tells me that uh, <laughs> he who finds a wife finds a good thing and finds favor. And when I found my wife, I found favor and found the blessing of a lineage that was locked inside of her because love came together and produced something quite amazing. When I think about marriage, I think of the I do I said on August the 10th, crying, but excited for the next day. Okay, I love that you see my, you see Jeremy knocking these questions out, right? That's why I said we're gonna try to keep Jeremy around for a little bit. Jeremy, your next one's gonna be parenthood. 
because I know you have some amazing kids, parenthood. But I want mm-hmm. you to I want you to do it differently though. I want you to break down being a father to to two girls and now Jeremiah. That's the way I want you to break that down for us. All right, bet. All right. Y'all see this hair, right? I don't, I don't have no hair now. So I, I can't, I done pulled it all out because of these kids. It's chilling. No, I'm just kidding, man. I, I love, I love my kids. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a girl. Why are, you blink, dad. Why, why are you blinking so hard? <laughs> I'm a girl, dad. I love, I love my girls. And uh, when I first saw them, man, my heart melted. I, I knew that they had me wrapped around their finger. And I knew that I wanted to protect them. I knew that I wanted to model what a what a what a loving father is. I wanted to model what a what a good man is. Because really, when you think about kids, really they if it's done right, I want to say, they have a chance to fall in love with their father. Their father is the first person they kiss. Is the first male they kiss. Their their father is the one who is is that compass. And I knew that I wanted to be that compass. I knew that I wanted to to honor my life um, before them and teach them about worship and and teach them about um, about falling in love with your passion and expressing yourself. Man, <laughs> when I hear them say "Daddy," man, my heart melts. And in and, and, and times when I may get frustrated, you know, just one look from them just really melts me. I mean, it, 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 it just, oh man, it does something to me. And, and so my, my two girls are like 18 months apart. So they grew up kind of close. And um, me and my wife knew we were going to have another one, but we didn't know. People were like, you want a boy? You want a boy? I said, you know, I, I want whatever God gives me, you know, I'm a, and it ended up being a boy man man it's different man it, 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 it's different having a boy it's different uh it's like my whole my whole life flashed before me and I was thinking man what did I do right how how can I teach him how to do this I don't even know how to do this you know and I got all these books and I'm trying to figure out how do I show him this and God told me I, I'll teach you I'll show you as I'm your father and as you call to me Model for him as I've modeled for you. And as you have other kings surrounding you, man, it's, it's different. And so, man, I, I can't wait till they, till they get older and we, can, and we can have some fun, even more fun. Yes. I want to know something that's crazy. I told Jeremy when I first met, I said, Jeremy, you're going to have another one. <laughs> and Jeremy was like, mm-hmm. nah, that ain't going to happen. I said, we good, happen. we good. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to y'all. When he told me, I couldn't tell nobody. I was more excited than he was. I was like, yes, yes. And then I found out was, yes, I was a boy. I was just like, yes, like a boy, because he got the two little girls. Now he got a son. You know, the career in the clay is gonna have ten more now. I'm playing. I'm playing. No, no, I'm good. I'm playing. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Your next one. Is gonna be when I say speak life, what comes to your mind? Mm. What comes to mind is the times where I was silent. What comes to mind is the times where I should have spoken and I let the moment pass. When I think about speaking life, for me, I think about the times where my own silence suffocated me. And I was desperate for a word. I was desperate to experience freedom. And I was desperate to experience uh, God's love and God's intimacy. And when I think about life, I think about that moment when I was at the bottom of a, in a dorm room. And um, since then, that dorm room has been demolished and rebuilt. But when I was in the basement, it was as if someone had poured a bucket of water on me and my life felt refreshed. It felt new. It was as if I was living a different life and it truly was. And since that moment, 
back in 07, 05, really 04. Um, speak life has always been a part of me. Okay. I got another person, man. Um, you probably know him. You know what I'm saying? He got like long yeah. hair, gold teeth, you know, all you wearing for doors and everything like that. And he's very, very powerful, you know. So he got like a bunch of kids, got like about six kids, I think. Um, mm -hmm. very amazing dude, man. When I say the name mm -hmm. Kyle Jacko, what comes to your mind? <laughs> Kyle Jacko, the one and only. I will never in my life meet another Cal Jacko. Uh, I think of my my brother. I think of uh, my friend. I think of someone I talk to, dang, at least, what, five times out of a week? I think of someone who is on the cusp of something amazing. When I think of Cal, I think of someone who is <laughs> always joking, but always has a seriousness deep down inside. I see someone who is who is grasping at the world and who sees nothing in his way. When I think about Kyle, I think about someone who who um, who people envy. Yet he still has love to give because his platform is built from sacrifice. His platform is built from sweat, from from wanting everyone to feel accepted and to be a part of something great. When I think of Kyle Jacko, I think of uh, someone who I hope can, maybe not hope, but who I can see um, take the world by storm. As long as you coming with me in that booster seat, we good to go. <laughs> I'm gonna give you one more, man. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do it like this. When I say um, because he was on the King series, so I gotta shout him out. Um, Ov. When I say Ov, you know, Ov, we got. Oh, yeah. Him. When I say Ov, what comes to your mind right now? Cause I got I gotta put him in his wordplay. I have to. Oh man! Oh, from Mombasa, Kenya. Ov, the one that's always smiling. Man, Ov from Mombasa. Every time I call him up, I say Jumbo, Jumbo Sana. Uh, he 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 is amazing. He he is, man. When when I first saw him, I said, man, I said that's a brother I need to know. And I called him. I said, man, I don't even know what this means. I don't even know what this means for our relationship. But I know that I need to get to your space. Um, he does everything with purpose. He does everything with with insight. And I've seen him in the, in in the in the limelight, so to speak. I, I saw him as he was embarking on on his new book man oh oh otumbo oh, vincent man he he is amazing because he is intentional and he is uh he <laughs> the way he says it exactly Man, for me, it's just perfect. It's just perfect. So every time he speaks, I'm just gleaning like, okay, tell me more, tell me more. Man, oh, oh he's a good brother, man. He's a good brother. Yes, man. Like when I done this video, I didn't know, I didn't know only was he young. You know what I'm saying? He's young, but he has so much power, so much. Oh energy. my goodness. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Truly do love it. But man, you have won the wordplay, man. You won Ooh, the come on. What I got, man. Okay, man. So the first one is, do you like Popeyes? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I got a gift for you. So I have you 125 biscuits. You can't drink no water. You don't have no butter on there. You have no salt, no pepper. And you got to eat all these biscuits in less than 15 seconds. I can't do that, man. Now, Jeremy, you believe in God, right? Yeah, I know he turned water into wine, but he, it, the scripture don't say he put butt on the biscuits now. <laughs> but you love God, so think about this. If God told you to walk on water, you'll do it, right? Oh, of course. So now, but I don't believe he called me to eat them biscuits, though. You got to eat these biscuits, though, Jeremy. You're going to be able to do it. He ain't calling me to eat them biscuits. He's not calling me to eat them biscuits, man. So, man, you ain't going to eat the biscuits. You, you, you eat it first, and, and then whatever's left, then I'll, uh, it's a I'll gift. take you. It's a gift from me to you. 
Well, well, I receive it, but I, I can't say it. I'm going to eat them. I receive it, though. I receive the gift. <laughs> okay. And the next one I got for you. Man, I'm be sending you, because you said in the Carolinas, I'm be sending you a box. It's going to be a box, and it's going to be a red box with a green bow around it. It's not Christmas gift. I'll be sending it to okay. you in two weeks. The box is going to be about this long. Okay. Now, when you open the box, when you look inside the box, you're going to have a Chucky doll inside. What? <laughs> so I'll be sending it to you in about two weeks. So when it comes to you, oh. you just make sure you're good. You're straight though. <laughs> so it's going to be a Vince's Chucky doll. So I'll be sending it to you. Man, ever since I saw the movies, man, I don't do dolls, man. I don't do dolls, man. Okay, so let me get this straight. So you're not going to take the biscuit. You're not going to take the Chucky doll. Can I can I throw the Chuck? Can I take the gift and throw Chucky doll in the fire like they did in the movie? No. <laughs> <laughs> I got one more gift for you. You like um, you like do you like Kirk Franklin? You like Kirk Franklin, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be sending you Kirk Franklin album. You know the one we had stuff on. I'll be sending that to you. Okay, guys, property. All right. All my people. The only said- thing back. The only thing bad about it is broke up in 575 pieces and I don't have the cover. It's going to just be a cover with me like this on there. <laughs> well, hey, man, I, I receive any gift you give, but uh, I already got the CD, so mine is only broken in four pieces. <laughs> so you said you receive, pieces. you just say you receive any gift I give you. So I mean the biscuits, that mean the turkey dog, you just say you receive any gift. I receive it, man. I receive it. I can't tell you where it's going to go afterwards, but I receive it. Though. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, man. What y'all know about this wordplay, man? This wordplay is something that's truly amazing to me because a lot of these kings, like, man, when we do this wordplay, we don't never know what they're going to say. But you see what Brother Jeremy, I had to give him five questions because we couldn't do three. Three wasn't going to be enough. But side side, let me tell y'all something. The Kings are chapter four next year. Hey, y'all gonna be receiving Gucci belts. Y'all gonna be receiving fedora hats. Y'all gonna be receiving chains. Y'all gonna be receiving Jordans. I don't know who's gonna buy that for you. But next year, somebody's gonna buy that for you. Probably ain't gonna be. I'll tell y'all that right now. So with that being said, we gotta get to another point of the video. This part of the video, when I say, I tell y'all, every time when we do this, it shocks me what the king say because, like, that's my uncle Eddie Ray Brown. That's him. But for the King series, and let me tell y'all this, for the King series, chapter four for next year, you watch right now, you want to be a part of the King series, everybody got to watch this video. So if you don't want to watch the video, you're probably not going to make it on the King series. But this video was so great to me because um, my uncle, he had chemo. So I couldn't shoot the video. That day I was supposed to shoot the video. But when I couldn't shoot the video, um, he ended up getting somebody named Super Dave to shoot the video for him. And he done the video. It was the last video he done before he passed away. So that's why this video is important. It's the King Series Chapter 1, Series 15. He's looking at you like this. And Jeremy, I would love if you can expound on what you saw from the video. And on top of that, why should all kings and queens go watch the video? Man, first of all, Kyle, man, I appreciate you sharing that video with me because, you know, one, you're giving me, giving me space on your platform to even speak. And the least I can do is honor you, honor our friendship, honor our brotherhood by listening to something in, or to someone that you value. When I, when I heard, um, I don't know why I won't call him Bishop Eddie, <laughs> Bishop Brown, when, when I heard him, man, one, I mean, it, it, it reminded me of my grandfather. And because um, you just don't see men like that with the caliber and the confidence and the fortitude um, that he had. Man, I didn't know that he had his own barbershop. I didn't know that he was uh, had a boxing uh, studio and trained young guys. Um, and he was sharing um, how he was living in overtime because the time that the doctors gave for him to expire, God was gracious enough and extended his days. 
And he knew that he was living on in overtime. And he was sharing that, man, he had so much life in him. Said that sometimes he's, he's so alive, wanting to pursue his dream and wanting to pursue his destiny that he doesn't even want to go to sleep sometimes. And man, you just, it, it, it's inspiring. It's inspiring for him to speak about um, movements that have happened and, and talking about, man, it was just like going back to the basics. And I think his birthday's coming up, right? In like five, six days, something like that. And so, man, I, I, I really celebrate him and, and his legacy. And um, I see how you um, pattern your life after him. And there's some things in the video that he was sharing. And um, I can see, man, if you were to pattern your life after anyone, he was the one. He was the one. He talked about how he was, he woke, he would wake up sometimes and wouldn't even have the energy to fight to get up. But he said he kept pushing. He kept pushing forward, even when his body wouldn't quite let him. And man, he was just saying that he he lived his life, man. He 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 lived his life, and so I'm I'm just uh, I mean I got so much to say about him, but I, man, one I, I do appreciate you sharing um, part of his life with me, and um, I can look back at that video, and I can even refer people that I know to look at that video and to be inspired by someone who lived his life every day every day he was smooth too man had a little cup little yellow cup right there he just just chill it man oh he was he was smooth man i appreciate it thanks man i love that man because um i tell people all the time you want to know where this civil back gorilla mentality comes from you want to know where there's aggression and everything come from it comes from when you know what i'm saying when the world sometimes looks at you and think you're something else different Everybody looked at Mark Edward Brown and looked at him like, man, you can't do your own barbershop. He did. Looked at him, but you can't do your own boxing gym. He did. You can't overcome this right here. To me, I feel like he left his world empty. He won. He won his battle with the cancer. He did. Because he don't have to deal with it all anymore. Even when you look at this video, you're going to see he's smiling through the whole entire video. And he's healthy. So you wouldn't even tell that anything was wrong with him. So with me, like, you ever want to know, like, why I am the way I am? Look at the video. It's King Series, King Series Chapter One, Series Fifteen. Looking at you like this, we take it off. And whenever you see this shirt, you're gonna see his name right here. Whenever you look at the logo for the King Series, you're gonna write there. So think about this: we got some of our forty some kings on this King Series. He's on every video. He's on every logo. He's everywhere. So whenever you see me coming at you, I'm right there, come over the whole time. The rest in power, John Carter Ray Brown. Man, love him, miss him. And my aunt truly was blessed to the world in so many different ways because one thing about him, which I always did love about him is he never looked at you like you was the problem. He always told you that there's other things in your life you need to change so you don't have to be the problem. It might stick in the eye later on, but I'm telling you, it's, it's something you really need to think about right now because a lot of times, this goes out to the youth, a lot of times you're going to encounter people it's not going to understand you. When they understand you, that means you don't have to conform to who they are. I mean, what you have to do is think about it in your mind, what does God want you to be? When you think about what God wants you to be, you're really truly on the right path. And with that being said, Jeremy, I got another question for you. My question is right now, what are you doing right now to develop future kings to success in their life? You know, if, if you live your life for yourself, it's really a wasted life. Um, it's a wasted life, man. And so when I, what I'm doing, I am currently, I am uh, working for a uh, state agency where we work with um, justice involved youth. And so I see many youth and, and have a chance to talk to many youth who are, who are incarcerated. And part of, um, the conversations I have with them is to let them know that um, that there is still purpose, that they there 
that just because they made a mistake, it doesn't count them out. And talking to them really, I think it really helps shape who they are. I remember this young man, he was probably about 13 at the time, going coming in and out. And he would, he would leave, he would come back. And I would speak to him, share a few wisdom nuggets, and he would leave again. He ended up celebrating his sweet 16th birthday. And I said, man, why are you here? Why do you keep coming back? And we just had a heart-to-heart conversation. And he told me that this was the place behind bars now where he felt the safest. This was the place where he felt at home. And I knew then that the bars didn't just, it was, they were no longer physical. There were some bars that had his mind chained up. And what I'm doing in in that particular area is um, talking to those youth and, man, helping their minds get free, helping their minds get free. And that's what I think is is needed. Um, Not to mention, um, I was in youth ministry for about 17 years. But, man, I, I love youth. I love speaking life and showing them what their future can be, no matter what mistakes they've made. I love that, man, because um, I deal with a lot of youth in Atlanta, Georgia. Shout out to all y'all that be at the gym, that I'll be working out with. Shout out to all y'all that can be doing anything negative in this world, but you choose to do something positive. And I tell you a lot of times, when I speak to them about the youth, and I had this conversation the other day, and it was like, um, the question I had for everybody was, what are some of the behaviors that you wish that the youth would pick up so they could be better in life? And a lot of them said, it's them, them, them. And when I got the chance to speak, I told them, I said, let me tell you this, how you fix the youth, stop beating them down. Stop just giving them Bible verses every single day. Joe, read songs, read this, read this. You got to be able to tell them your testimony. You got to be able to tell the youth right now what have you been through. How can you correct the youth mind when the youth don't even know what you've been through? You ain't telling them you to be a dope boy. You ain't telling them you to be a stripper. You ain't telling them you to have a pill addiction problem. You ain't telling them none of that. All that you do is tell them, go pick up the Bible, read this, read this, read this, go to church. The youth not going to listen to everything you're saying. So I hopefully what Jeremy just told you about the inside of it. And he told you about him being a youth pastor. And he's telling you right now with everything else that he's doing outside. And I'm telling you right now what I do. I train little kids right now. I'm trying to let them. I train them because at the end of the day, I want these kids to go out there and be great. A lot of these kids don't have no mother, don't have no father, don't have no auntie, don't have no uncle. That's why this King series was created. It's created because if you don't want to go out there and do it, guess what? Now they got 40 some kings out there they can go reach out to on these hyperlinks, look at their bio and see what they can do. It. So guess what? If you don't want to be the change, stop trying to blame you for something you don't want to be the change. You have to be the change. And with that being said, I just want you to know this. To all of you watching right now, everybody watching, you're going to do an amazing, great thing. Only thing you got to do is listen to your parents. If you don't have no parents right now, listen to anybody that's uh, don't. Make sure you use discernment. If you don't know what discernment is, do what you do everything else. Go Google it. But make sure they point something in you that's knowledgeable. Make sure they can pray for you. Make sure they can teach you how to pray. Make sure they can tell you about their life. When they get ready to talk to you, I need you not to talk back. I need you to listen. Listen is one of the qualities that every person in this world should have. Don't talk all the time. It's best to listen. And trust me, I love to talk. But the way I get better in life is by listening, no matter what. And with that being said, Brother Jeremy, your next question is, what behaviors do you see in mainstream society that's sending out the wrong king development message? Woo, Kyle, man, what you said was awesome. Um, man, we see it a lot. We see it a lot that there are no consequences to any, to any actions. Um, that sometimes I, I see youth doing young kings doing what they want to do and not looking down the road what they're doing is fulfilling their pleasure satisfying their desires if, if they don't like you then they're moving somewhere else and and some sometimes people actually get hurt in the process 
And then it's not until days later they said, oh, I didn't realize that. I didn't, I didn't see that because there's this entitlement behavior that they have to get it. They have to get it now and they deserve it and they deserve to have it and no one else. And what I love um, is that sooner or later they, they, they find out the truth. They find out, wow, I shouldn't just feel entitled. I should actually give my life away. I should actually sow my life and do something for society, do something for humanity. Um, it's a selfish mentality. It's an it's a insta kind of society. So something that is, is, is worth of, uh, that is valuable may not be obtained quite as fast. It needs to be developed. It needs to be curated, it needs to be stored somehow. And I think when youth, young kings get a chance to figure out that, wow, I need to take some time and develop my character before I get into this position, before I make a mistake. Because when I find out only character can really keep you there, only character can really keep you on, on, on that platform and, and from slipping. Our, our, our kings, our young kings need a lot, man. And they need someone like, like you, Kyle, to, to speak to them and to let them know the right image, um, the right motivation. They need to know the truth. They need to know. Love that, brother Jeremy. Love that. That's, that's what I try to do to all of you. You know what I'm saying? Because I tell people this right here. You want to judge me for looking like this? <laughs> that's on you. Because I know when I open my mouth and I get ready to say something, I'm going to say, like I said on Clubhouse all the time, I'm the one that your mom and your daddy told you to watch out for. I'm, I'm that one. I'm that guy. Because I say that so much because it's been a lot of times where people judge me for the way I look. And y'all doing the same thing to the youth. And y'all keep on forgetting that once upon a time, you weren't always 40 years old. You was 18 years old one time. You were 20 years old at the time. You were 21. You always was not doing the right thing in your life, though. But for some reason, <laughs> you think you forgot about what you used to do. Now think about this, kings and queens, to the older generation. What if you was to let everybody know your testimony or how you got to where you got right now? And you let them know it. And you say nothing, but God changed my testimony. That's how you changed it. But what if you had to go back and speak to the younger you? You was doing all that fool. Mm. What you gonna say to it? And was you back? Was you back then saying God? Was you back then saying everything was this way? Or was you saying this right up? I don't know where I'm going, but eventually I get there. And guess what? That's what you was just saying right now. I don't know where I'm going, but eventually I'm gonna get there. And the only thing they're looking for now is they're looking for prayer. They look to see, are you going to let go of your testimony? Because right now the youth don't have one yet. They're building. We got to be able to sit up there and do everything. Man, check this out. When it comes to the youth, the youth want to have highlight reels. If you know anything about highlight reels is they last for a moment and they fall. How many youth in your community right now are trying to have highlight reels and not they locked them in jail right now? Or are they dead? Somebody has to be the change, and it might be you. I'm not saying you're going to save everybody out there. When you go to the store, go speak to that youth right now. See what they're going to tell you. Just ask them how you're doing. Ask them how they going. I'm not saying all youth are the same. Some of them ain't going to lie. Some of you got to watch out for us. Let's not play with that one. Use your discernment. You're grown. But just know, you speak to them, you can change their whole entire life. That's all it takes. And with that being said, you are know my favorite part of the video is time for the king's prayer the king's prayer got created because when the queen's prayer ha happened shout out to the queen for that queen prayer shout out to them but we have something on there called the king's prayer because god gave me a vision last year was the motivation of prayer and then god told me this year instead of calling a motivation to prayer call it the queen's prayer for the queen series and the king's prayer for the king series let my children pray over everybody that's a part of this series let my children pray over everybody that they know so for the journey i want you to do the king's prayer i want god to use you i want the holy spirit to use you if you want to go 
20 minutes, 30 minutes, got another way you like to pray. King, I want you to go deep down and let God use you. For the Kings, I want you to pray for all the Kings on this King series, all the Kings in the Carolinas, all the Kings in Texas, all the Kings all over Clubhouse. Pray for everybody. Let God use you. And once you get once you get done, hey, I'll be back. I got some closing remarks for y'all. I got some more words for y'all. And then we're going to let Jeremy do some more stuff. So right now, check us out, Mom. We're in the white. Let's pray, y'all. God, I thank you so much for this moment that you have given us, that you have given us to share, that you have given us to be in your presence. God, we worship you with thanksgiving. God, we come into your presence with fullness of joy, knowing that you are the one who brought us to your table. God, we thank you for who you are for building in us the testimony that can withstand any chaos, any confusion, the testimony that can withstand <laughs> with even the darts that Satan may throw. God, I thank you for who you are in us when we couldn't be who we, you called us to be. Thank you for rising in every king. Father, for you were with us, you were with them when we were young, when we were growing and learning, and you spoke your truth into us, you caused us to come to a knowledge, to a wisdom, to an understanding, to a grounding of who you are. And right now, God, I pray for every king that you would give them a table to set. You would give them a place where they have authority, that they will not give their authority to someone else. I pray that you would allow them to stand firm-footed and grounded in the truth, that you would not allow them to give uh, even their energy away. God, we speak to everyone who is listening today, Father, and I pray for your words of wisdom, your truth, and your joy to break the bars where they are in. God, I pray for you to, to, to resurrect things that are in their lives, dead, my God, dead things that have been laying dormant for a while. God, I speak life, and I cause those dry bones to come together. I cause those, 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 those fragments to come together. I speak wholeness. I speak in intimacy in the woundedness of their lives that they would find intimacy with you and they would be one with you before they're one with someone else. God, I pray in Jesus name that you would saturate their lives with worship, that you would saturate their lives with thanksgiving and that you will be on the throne in their lives because to be a king, you, my God, you must first have the king of kings in your life. And so I pray in Jesus' name that every king would surrender to the king of kings and that they would find themselves in the presence and in the fullness of who he is. I speak life to you today, and I thank you for listening. I thank you for giving your heart to this prayer, for giving your ear and in and, and your spirit to these words. May they be life-giving in Jesus' name. And before we close, Father, we pray for Kyle in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for your hand to rest heavy on him. I pray for every door to be open. I pray for every financial possibility to be made uh, possible in his life. I pray for that one that is his to be, to be shaped, to fit into his life. I pray that he finds the one that you have given him. God, I pray for supernatural overflow in his life that you would give him unbelievable amount of strength to do what you have called him to do. I pray that you would give him rest and you would quiet his soul. In times of chaos and times of confusion, I pray in Jesus' name that you will quiet his soul and you would give his soul the answer that he has longed to hear that, yes, you are with him indeed. You are with him even in this. I pray that you would allow his voice to expand and echo across the nation. Father, let this bishop of motivation exalt you in this place, exalt you in his life. 
I thank you for this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You know, when you give people like Jeremy some time, man, you got to just let the hat go. You got to let the hat hit the ground. You got to let the hat hit the ground. Man, this is the King Series, Chapter 3. Make sure you tell your mom, you tell your dad, you tell your auntie, you tell your cousin, you tell your baby daddy, baby mama. Tell everybody you know that the King Series, Chapter 3, is that one God and motivation. Win with the food. King Series comes out once a year. So next year is going to be the King Series Chapter 4. One thing, when God gave me a vision for the Queen Series and the King Series, he told me this. When you do it, you let the Queens go first, let the Kings go last. But you're going to do it constantly. So we ain't got a generation right now where one thing pops off and another thing pops off and another thing pops off. This is not it. I'm always, I'm always do something on this YouTube channel. It's always going to be about God and motivation. When it comes to this King and Queen series, though, you're only getting that once a year. So I hope you're really, really enjoying it. Y'all get ready for the last video of the King series tomorrow. And make sure you go to these type of ones at the bottom of this video. Click into them. Speak to the King. They got their club out down there, Facebook, Instagram, emails. Speak to them and see what they're doing. You never know they could bless your whole entire life. And with that being said, Brother Jeremy, I want you to close out the whole video. But I want you to give a motivational message to the kings first. And that gives them a motivational message. I want you to give it to the queens second. Hey, remember this right here. I'm just hosting this video. This is their video. So brother German, go ahead and speak like, like only you can do. Hey, until next time, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Remember, keep a smile on your face. Keep God first. Brother German, you got the money. Man, Brother Kyle, I appreciate you allowing me to come on this platform. You are the Bishop of Motivation. Thank you so much for allowing me to, to share and to be a part of what you are doing. Uh, I do not count this lightly. I count it an honor of my life. Thank you so much. This is what I have to say for the Kings. Do not give up your seat to anyone. God has placed you in authority and God has placed you in position. It is time to rise up. It is time to be who you have been, who God created you to be before the foundations of the world. It is time for you to be counted for, to be enlisted in the army of making solutions and fixing lives and transforming and speaking destinies. It is time for you to rise up and take your place. You cannot be a king if the king of kings first is not sitting on the throne of your life. What are you afraid of? What are you running away from? Are you running away from your past? Are you running away from those things that frightened you when you was a little boy? Because sometimes what I found out is that people are running scared because they are afraid of the ghosts of their past. As a king, you have the authority to fight anything that comes against you. You have the power to, 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 to focus your mind on the future and not the ghost of your past. Because you're, those ghosts are only illusions, are only distractions, because the enemy can never give you nothing new. The enemy has old tactics and old strategies. Find out what is stopping you from, from functioning at your full potential. As a king, take your place and put the king of kings on your throne. To the queens, I wanna let you know that you're incubators, you're carriers, that you have within you the power of life. In scripture, Eve is considered the mother of all living. 
you have within you life. Don't take it for granted. Don't take for granted your power to carry, your power to nurture, your power to, to provide nourishment to individuals. Because what the enemy wants to do is take away your strength, to hit you in that place where there was daddy issues, where there was abuse, whatever it is, you name it. And now the enemy has control of your perception, wants you to discredit yourself, wants you to change who you are to fit the image of someone else, to fit the image of someone's fantasy. God has created you. God has built you in his image. God has built you in such a way that no one can replicate it, no one can duplicate it. God has built you in a way where the enemy is jealous because the enemy can never produce life, my God. He can only take it. Use your gift to produce. Use your gift, what is in you, to carry. You're going to be surprised at what you're going to see because you're going to see exactly what it is. You're going to feel that thing kick in you. Now I'm talking to your spirit. You're going to feel that thing rise in you. And you're going to have the strength to push, to pray until something happens. You're going to have the strength to manifest what is inside of you. And I declare and I speak to you that you will not birth anything that is less than life. I come against any abortions, that you do not abort the gift and the life that is in you, the ministry, the deposit that God has put in you. I speak that you're going to have safe delivery, and I speak that you're going to hear its voice, and you're going to nurture it until it is fully grown to produce after its own kind. I know I'm speaking to your spirit. You have the power to produce. Don't let someone take it away and use it for their own fantasy, for their own monetization. Use your gift. That's my message for the kings and the queens. Thank y'all for this opportunity to share, to be with you in this space. There's life inside of you. And I can't wait to see what comes of it.